write also about uh, breaking cycles a lot. Yeah. And I'm wondering, how does that, um, what does that mean for us in terms of personal trauma, but also communal trauma? And how, yeah. how is it different to pursue personal healing and communal healing? Because I, I, obviously both yeah. are important, but is there an order to this? Is it a both and? Yeah. Um, um, I think it's both. Yeah. I think it's both and. Um, but I think that when you're, when you're coming from a place where um, you're in touch with what, and that, that really is the first step, is what actually did happen? Because I think with, it's not just racial trauma, but trauma period. Often yes. that is the issue, is that sometimes we tell ourselves a story about what happened. Um, and it's not the complete story. And um, because we walled off parts of ourselves where it's just too painful to look at. And so when we do get in touch with that and we're, we're really gentle with ourselves in that process, it's not about forcing ourselves out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but when we're ready, um, to really begin to uh, really seek the Lord about what what is going on. How has that trauma affected my mind? How has it affected my emotions, my body? Um, you know, I engage in listening prayer of just help, asking the Lord to help me to identify where where are those pain points, um, and what is that about? Um, you know, the Scripture talks about taking every thought captive and making it subject to Christ. And so it's as those thoughts pop up that whether trauma related or whether it's identity related, shame related, but any of those negative thoughts, um, really taking them captive and saying, Lord, what do you say about mm -hmm. this? Um, and so and in that way, we begin to get in touch with what really is going on, what are the consequences of the trauma that we've experienced. And then we're able to eventually be able to tell our whole story. Um, and even even telling our whole story to the Lord, I mean, he already knows, but one of the things that I write about is lament and just the, the, the process of really being honest with God, yeah, uh, brutally honest with how you really, really feel. And it's not shocking or surprising to God that you feel whatever it is, rage, anger, grief, you just feel despair, depressed about everything that what has happened yeah. and that you're honest. And even if it's that you don't understand where he was and what was he doing, and you feel like he was absent, he didn't care, he can hear all of that, he can handle all of it. And, and lament has been described as just that wrestling in prayer, being, being honest, and really um, in that process, if we look at the Psalms, you see, you see King David come to this place where there's acknowledgement of who God is and what he is doing and was doing um, in the midst of some really devastating experiences. And so yeah. that's, a, that's an important part. It's telling our whole story, lamenting before the Lord, finding other people who are trustworthy. And, and that's a task because not everybody's trustworthy, but those who can handle our stories are not going to give us pat answers, but can persevere and walk with us through it. And it's not a quick fix and it takes time. And so to have those trusted others to come alongside and walk with you and persevere with you, because that's, that's the Lord. I mean, he yeah. perseveres with us. Yeah, that's he's, right. He's about get your act together. Get over yeah. it. You know, what, one of my, um, becoming a parent has actually really helped mm -hmm. me to yeah. start learning this because I've realized, you know, if my kids were only ever coming to me when they were thankful or when they wanted something or when they wanted to, you know, I mean, I'm grateful if they thank me, yeah. believe me, I'm very grateful. Yeah. It's wonderful. And, you know, um, but if they never came to me when they were upset or when they were mad at me or when they thought I made a wrong decision or when they didn't understand my motivation, you know, I'd be like, come on, like, I want your whole, I want the whole relationship. And when you're mad at me, I, I actually want a chance to set the record straight. You know, I want to, um, I want to hash this out and I'm not God. So sometimes I am wrong, you know, and I want to, I want to have that chance to, to be humble and honest with you. But that's really actually helped me in my own relationship with God to understand that if I want this so much for my kids, how much more does God yeah. want our full humanity and our, and our, you know, our unabridged version, our uncensored version. 
to, to come to him. Yeah. That's been so, so helpful for me, but we're we're often, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just just commenting. I I think that one of the things I say to people is that God is not, he's not interested in robots. Yes. (laughs) We just kind of do what we are told, Right. you know, just kind of mimicking that, but he wants a relationship and relationships are, there's an exchange. It's messy. It's wonderful. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. When you're talking about even just the ability to go back and and tell the stories, you know, um, the subtitle of your book is The Road to Resilience. And of course, I want to talk about resilience. We all want to talk about resilience. We all want the, uh, what, what can we, what can we muster out of this hardship, you know? And I think that's intrinsically American as well, is that we love a good success story, don't we? Like we, we I remember when, um, when I first encountered grief for myself as an adult, I remember just having to really rail against that um, tendency and my knee-jerk reaction to just want to rewrite it into a success story. How can I figure this out? How can I, you know, how can I transform this for my good? And how can mm-hmm. I, you know, overcome and, and that sort of thing. And, and I, I really had to learn um, to name the pain, to sit in the pain, to name my suffering. Um, yep. You know, resilience is such a buzzword. My kids, they, they talk about it because even in school, their teachers use it, yep. which I'm really grateful for. Their teachers and as educators talk about building resilience, but we sort of, it seems to me, we sort of want to skip to the resilience part and go, well, how do we build resilience? But we don't want to sit in the trauma part and go, actually, resilience is a result of working through the trauma. Can you help? Can you explain why just jumping into how do we build resilience is is backwards? Yeah. Well, I think you you really have hit the, the nail on the head is that, you know, we we don't want to, this is human nature. We don't really want to feel pain. Um, and so it's easy to, um, just, you know, whatever, name it and claim it or, um, and you know, it's, it's hard though, because the tension is the reality that God is at work at the same time. And so it's really, it is owning of that while at the same time, owning the reality of pain and suffering in the midst of it. And so, um, holding that that tension is is important and i think about like even the climate that we're in right now where if we just look at the news and social media and whatever it it's really like all doom and gloom and it's it's just horrific it's it's pretty bad yeah and yet at the same time it's so, so important that even in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our pain, you know, God is always speaking. He's always speaking. And so, and he's always, there are always these moments of beauty and moments of light, even small, teeny things. And and so it's so important that, um, that we hold both of those. Otherwise it's, it's easy to just really fall into just a full uh, pit of despair where we, really lose sight of what God has done. You know, what is he doing now? You know, what is it that he wants um, to do in us and through us? And, yeah. and what is the, you know, what is the future what is that he's calling us towards? And so it's holding all, all of that. And it's, it's not easy, but resilience is, you know, that sense of that, you know, we, we are having these experience, but, um, we grow in resilience. It's not a once off like, Oh, suddenly I'm resilient. I bounce back from every single thing bad that happens to me. It's one of we're walking it out. Yeah. And sometimes it's two step forward and one step back. Um, but we're growing and it takes time, um, for, for maturity. And I've seen that I've seen that in walking with hundreds and hundreds of people and individually and in groups and couples of, people's journey and and yes i've been able to actually see the lord do like the incredible transformation work but it takes time and i think most people they think it needs to have happened yesterday and that it should be quick and and sometimes it's you know there are these moments where it's just like breakthrough and wow but often it really is a walking it out it's walking Mm -hmm. it out with the lord you're not alone in the midst of it yeah and um 
And so that's the building of the resilience is walking through the good and the bad and just continuing to walk forward in his strength and in his power. Um, and that then we grow stronger and stronger as we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because there is this, we do have a reality as, as Christians that um, we, that God doesn't fit in our box. And there are those moments, right, of breakthrough. There are moments. I know that I've had my own lived moments of healing yeah. where things that I've worked through for a long time, all of a sudden I have an encounter with the Lord in prayer or in whatever way. And there is a significant leap. It doesn't mean I'm finished, yeah. but there's a leap. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and so really it is, it's both, isn't it? It's that that journey of doing the work, but also knowing that at any moment as we do the work that God can and does break through. And that is our hope. And um, yeah. I also you. wanted to say too, that there are moments where um, like the, the, there are moments of just pause too, of, you know, so it isn't, isn't work all the time. It is, um, you know, there are moments where we're led um, by still waters, you know, where we, you know, he leads me, lead, leads us by still, you know, pastoral, you know, fields and still waters. And there are places of respite where it's just, you know, we, we need rest because we've been at it for a long time. And where the Lord points out, like, you know what, you've been doing this in your own strength. Yeah. <laughs> and it's time to, to surrender and it's time to rest, and it's time to go at my pace and my leading you. Yeah. Um, and so th that's important too. And, and that is the upside down kingdom, isn't it?